Welcome back. We have the uglier part of rational expressions, which is adding and subtracting them. Ironically, when you have an equation, you can multiply both sides by the common denominator and clear the fractions. When you don't have an equation, all you can do is get a common denominator. So we're gonna be making use of this idea of equivalent fractions, where we can multiply by a crazy form of one, C over C is one, C could be anything. So sometimes it's gonna be X minus five over X minus five or Y plus three over Y plus three. So long as you're multiplying the same thing to the top and the bottom, you're good to go. All right. So in order to add or subtract these ugly things, we need the denominators to be the same. So there's two ways to think about this. You could identify what the lowest common denominator is, or you can just focus on what does one have that the other doesn't have and then give the other the thing it doesn't have. That's the way I usually do it since we don't have an equation. But figuring out the LCD works because when we do the equations, that's what we'll do. All right, so 9y squared versus 15y. So 9y squared, that's really 3 times 3 times y times y. 15y is really 3 times 5 times y. So the LCD, I need to see two 3s, so 3 times 3. I need a 5, and I need two y's. So that's everything I want to see in my least common denominator. I could actually multiply that and get 45y squared. We'll get that eventually, but for now, I'm actually going to leave it like that and just focus on what am I missing. So 3, 3yy, three, y, y. all I'm missing on the first fraction is a 5 on the bottom. So that first fraction is going to get multiplied by 5 over 5. So first, I'm just going to recopy the fraction out here. So it's my size. So like I said, that first fraction, all it's missing is a five on the bottom. So we have to give it a five on top. All right, now our 15 only has a three, a five and a Y. So I need another three and another Y. So just on this fraction, we will multiply by three Y over three Y. Now you can do the same thing um, when you're solving an equation, you can combine fractions together, but I just really prefer working off of clearing the fractions. Now, it can be tempting looking at this setup here on the right, like three goes into 15 five times. Don't do it. We're multiplying here to make the bottoms bigger. So we don't want to cancel anything right now. We just want to smush them. So five times eight on top over here is going to be 40. And on the bottom, 45y squared. Plus on the top is now 3y. On the bottom is 45y squared. And then they have the same denominator. So we write it all together. 40 plus 3y all over 45y squared. And that's it. Normally we would check to see if something reduces. They don't, all the terms don't have a y. All the terms can't be divided by three. And then three y is the smallest term. So if I can't simplify that any, then I'm done. Now you could write it three y plus 40 all over 45 y squared but it really doesn't matter. So the simplified, the result is just the default instructions. Really, I would actually expect it to simplify some, at least to see a number when there's only these little denominators, but it doesn't always. Now these, these expect it if you don't get something canceling after you subtract, like, Kind of give it a side eye, like, where's my mistake? That don't make sense. 
All right. Now, again, this is not an equation, so we are not solving. I'm not going to have t equals some number as my answer. If you get that, you put an equal sign in there somewhere where you weren't supposed to. So first thing, in order to figure out what the common denominator we need is, we got a factor. Now, most of the stuff you're going to see now, the factoring is actually going to be pretty nice. Like you notice, we keep getting just single squares. We don't have 2t squared or 3t squared. All right, so this one, multiply to 6, add to 5. That is going to be the lovely 3 and 2. And then this one, well, there's only two numbers multiplied to 2, 1 and 2, and those add 2, 3. All right. So my red denominator and my green denominator here, they both have a t plus 2 already. So I don't need to multiply by that. I just need to give them what they're missing. So my red one is going to need a t plus 1. My green one will need a t plus 3. So I'm going to write it down here in black. So I have t t plus 3, t plus 2, minus 2. And that minus sign can be tricky, so always pay attention on these subtraction ones. t plus 1, t plus 2. All right. So I have the 3 and the 2. I need a t plus 1 over here. t plus 1, t plus 1. Over here on the right, I don't have that t plus 3. Now, before you start distributing and clearing the parentheses, what I would recommend is actually write it all as one fraction with that subtraction in there. Don't distribute anything because you're less likely to make a mistake if you do that. So our bottom here has t plus 1, t plus 2, and t plus 3. Don't multiply those back out. I know you guys can. The box would totally do it. Don't do it. They don't ask you to, and if something on the top is going to cancel, we need it in the factored form. The factored form is more useful, so don't multiply it back out. All right, so on top, that is t times t plus 1. And then the other top, we have the minus and the 2 and the t plus 3. So do you see now how that 2 is really a minus 2 that we have to distribute? You could distribute the 2 through, but then you're going to have to distribute the minus through. This way, it's a little more clear that this minus sign is really attached to this fraction top, the numerator. All right. so. The bottom's not going anywhere. And to be perfectly honest, I get tired of writing it. So very often I will start to do this. Blah, blah, blah. There's the bottom. But since we're doing a nice video, I will write it again. T plus one, T plus two. It's also every time I try to do the blah, 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 somebody misses when I said that, and then I have to write it in anyway. So after a while, I just write it in. So on top, we have a t squared plus t minus 2t minus 6. So I am now going to take this off to the side because this is going to factor. And that way, I don't have to keep writing the bottom. So that's going to be t squared minus t minus 6. So one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative, and 3 and 2 is going to be our only bet to get to a negative 1. So I'm going to put in the 3 and the 2. The bigger one negative, the smaller one positive. All right. Now that is what's going to come up top here. T minus 3, T 
plus 2 over 2 plus 1, 2 plus 2, 2 plus 3. And like I said, expect some cancellation. In this case, it's the t plus 2s. So our final answer is the t minus 3 on top and t plus 1, t plus 3 on the bottom. Don't multiply it back out. Just leave it like that. If Alex doesn't take that, email me and I'll go argue with it. But it should take that. So the subtraction here is probably the, like, the ugliest. Um, part of that is because the fractions themselves were more complex. So there we go. Next time I will do some equations and then I will do some word problems, which we've technically already done, but I'll do some more. All right.